You're listening to Radio Job Lines with your host, Scott Possessor, right here on 103.9 LI News Radio. Good afternoon, everybody. You're listening to Radio Job Line with Scott Possessor. Uh, we're here for you every Saturday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m., and we're here to talk about your career. Today we have three, count them, three companies on the show with job openings, and they'll interview you right here on Jobline. So give us a call. The call-in number is 631-451-1039. I'm going to lead off the show today with a little comedy for you. I uh, went camping over this past week, and it wasn't wasn't exactly a success. Um Yes, I was covered in flies. True. Uh, I camped in dirt. Yes, I was with a trailer, but the trailer didn't have the proper hookups. It was a lot like roughing it. It was 85 degrees and humid, and my buddy suggests that we go down the river, right down the Delaware River, uh, by kayak. So I said, well, why don't we take a canoe? Because a canoe, there's two people. You can go a lot faster. It's two people working together. And he said, no, 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 kayaks are faster. So... We signed up for the, the river trip, and we um, the next morning we get up. They, they take us about six and a half miles upriver, and they basically unload the kayaks, put them down on the rocks, and say, do you guys need a push-off? And my friend, whose idea this was, and who insisted on going on this river trip in 85-degree heat with a blazing sun, not a cloud in the sky, says, no, we don't need a push off, goodbye. And with that, the guy gets back in his truck and starts driving away. We then get into our kayaks, he gets into his kayak, his kayak is fine. I get into mine and it has no backrest. So if you think about kayaking without a backrest, you have to picture it, I'm leaning back in the kayak with my head against the the back of the kayak trying to paddle. Uh, This went on for about a mile and a half until we came up on on a beach, and it was just after Labor Day. There was not a a person around. I saw one person, and we started yelling to her, ma'am, do you have a cell phone? Do you have a cell phone? Do you have a cell phone? She finally said yes, and we went up on shore, and we called the place, and an hour later, they came back with another kayak, and I was able to continue my trip down the river, uh, which was five more miles of excruciating pain uh, in the searing heat. And uh, so the moral of the story is, I will never camp again. You will never see me camping again. You'll never hear me talking about camping again. It ends right here. Uh, And I'm sorry I had to get get that off my chest. Uh, In today's show, we have the Director of Human Resources for Riverhead Building Supply. That's Tammy Luby. Tammy is a veteran of Radio Jobline. Uh, Tammy's going to talk to us about some jobs, but also how do you um, how do you deal with the applicant tracking software from the employer's perspective, and also how to get noticed by recruiters. We're also joined by Jesse and it's Robluski. You got it. All right, Robluski. I asked him before the show. That's how I got that right. And he's from a company called Generations Beyond. He is the lead attention seeker at Generations Beyond. A terrific, uh, terrific title. I'm going to ask him yeah. about. And then we have a rock star company, Bob's Discount Furniture. Probably the funniest commercials, I think, on uh, on local television. Uh, and we're joined by George Burt, who's the regional manager for Long Island at Bob's Discount Furniture. Welcome, everybody. Anybody here doing any camping? No. No, sir. No? See? <laughs> See? Camping. Forget it. We're, uh, clearly, I'm not going to be doing that anymore. But um, let's talk about your companies. Uh, Jesse, I'm, I'm interested in this title that you gave yourself, Lead Attention Seeker. Uh, what are you trying to accomplish with that? So we are a digital marketing agency, actually right down the block from your studio in uh, Ronkonkoma. Um, you know, everyone kind of thinks of the internet. When you think of internet companies, you immediately think of Google and all these kind of new age massage, you know, massage therapists and mm-hmm. slides and scooters in the uh, mm-hmm. in the hallways. Um, so we kind of have that environment. Uh, we got a great team of about twelve people. They all have their own uh, expertise in the digital marketing uh, arena. But when it all comes down to it, you know, people come to us to get attention. You know, to get attention to tell people about how great their business is and, mm-hmm. and get the word out. So I guess as the leader, I'm the lead attention seeker, mm-hmm. and uh, people come to me to you know help uh, get the spotlight focused on them. That's really great, and I, and I love a, a brand new title like that. Thank uh, you. It's a new Thank age you. title. As a matter of fact, let me let me switch over to you, Tammy, as the director of human resources at Riverhead Building. Tell us a little bit about Riverhead Building Supply. Well, Riverhead Building Supply, family-owned business. Um, I have a f- 
feel very privileged to be the director of HR for the company because they're truly um, focused on customer service, extraordinary customer service, both to the employees and to the customers. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a third generation owned family business that honesty and integrity are at the top of our core competencies. So, and we also make sure that we give individual employees the opportunity to grow within the company. So we promote from within first, and then we uh, look outside. We have 600 employees in both New York and and Rhode Island. Mm. Now, one would think that Riverhead Building Supply sells building supplies, uh, but it's also probably a bellwether for the construction industry. If you guys are really busy, I would think then a lot of people are in, involved in construction. Is that a, is that absolutely. accurate? Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of people think uh, when I do job fairs or or just regular advertising, well, I don't want to lift lumber or maybe I don't want to drive a truck, but they don't see that there's a huge corporate organization behind it mm-hmm. where we have purchasing, marketing, IT, HR, um, estimating, mark. Uh, there's accounting. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a fully functioning milling facility where we do all our own custom mill work. It's mm. an amazing facility. Uh, we do tours from time to time. We also have design showrooms. Uh, we, we employ a lot of interior designers, uh, cabinet designers, custom kitchen designers, and then our sales force, both internal and external. Oh, good. That's great. Thank you. And George, we're going to come back to you because we believe there was an issue with your microphone when you were talking before. So could you tell us again about what an amazing uh, store Bob's sure. is? I mean, a corporation Bob's discount is. Yeah, that, that sounds much better. So uh, yeah, Bob started about 25 years ago um, with Bob Kaufman as the, as the founder of the organization. So he started um, after being in the waterbed industry and uh, that business, and then, you know, transitioned into opening up Bob's Discount Furniture with uh, with some partners, and it started just as one store, and which actually still exists today in Newington, Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And you know, here we are, 25 years later. It's such a you know success story, and uh, it's rare as well. It's a it's a rare success story, but we're at. Uh, 75 stores strong, and we just actually opened in the Midwest this year. We're in Chicago um, with uh, more expansion next year over there, um, some some pretty big expansion over there. Tell us about the scope here on Long Island. What have you got? How many stores do you have here? So we opened just about 10 years ago now. Uh, we started with our store in Farmingdale right on Route 110, Furniture Row, as everybody knows it. Right. And um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great location for us. Um, it's, uh, again, about 10 years old, and we have five stores on the island. So we serve as actually out in Riverhead, which mm-hmm. we opened two years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, just had the anniversary of that this Labor Day weekend. Mm. And then we go all the way to Freeport. So two in Nassau County and three in Suffolk. You know, the, uh, the, the commercials are really, really good. And I think the most likable part about the commercials is Bob himself. Mm-hmm. He just seems like such a down-home, easy-to-talk-to earthy type of guy you know that doesn't look like a ceo of a company he just looks like a regular guy you could have a beer with right that's exactly how he is he's the the you know humblest sweetest man you can ever meet and you know is just very involved in the community and giving back and that's that's something that he really stands for and you know you mentioned tammy about honesty and integrity and that's that's absolutely the the core of what bob's is all about as well and another thing that i like and and again i wonder if he ever got the help probably did of a a brilliant digital marketing Mm -hmm. agency uh but his what they're doing in the commercials by saying, look, if you buy this product, you're going to spend seventeen hundred dollars of it. If you buy it here at Bob's, it's eleven hundred dollars. And the reason that it's less money is for, and they even explain it. So I just think it's such a simple concept for a commercial, but it's working with such brilliance. Right. Yeah. Again, you know, it's back to just the core values as well. You know, Bob says in every commercial, no phony sales, no phony gimmicks. You know, just uh, unbeatable low prices. So. You know, we don't. We don't run sales. We don't do anything um, to bait and switch, you know, try, try and bring people in that way. It's, mm. uh, it's really a true to, um, you know, trying to just make it a great experience. Let's test the Jesse's knowledge. Jesse, how does a thing like this work so well? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, particularly with millennials, you know, we study a lot about millennials because mm-hmm. they're the next buying force. Um, unquestionably want to humanize your business, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're just a corporate business with stock photos and business as usual, it's not going to ring true with uh, millennials. You Mm -hmm. see all the, all the brands that millennials kind of take to, and you know, uh, it's almost like a cult, you know, Apple, Whole Foods, uh, they're, they all, they all have like kind of this origin story and they're personified. 
And then combined with the digital marketing experience, the digital buying experience, we all price shop. We mm -hmm. can have you know a dozen prices at the click of a button. Mm -hmm. So why not you know take that out of the buying process, be upfront about it? Because we're, at this point, we're all cutting through mm -hmm. the sales jargon and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I think the the combination of the human experience and the no nonsense sales approach is uh, you know you guys are hitting it out of the park and that's going to be the way of the future. And and this is the type of advice that your organization gives to people, Absolutely. right? Yeah. How to reach a larger audience. So give us these services that your company provides. So anything, uh, you know, people think that you sit behind a computer, you do absolutely everything. We, we, we need, when you get a computer virus, we're not your guys. Right. Um, we make you look like a rock star online. Right. So when we work with a lot of small businesses and all small business owners say, you know, my number one source of business is referrals, mm -hmm. right? When I meet someone or I, I can shake them you know, shake their hand and look them in the face, you know, I, I close the deal. What we do is take that trust that you build in person mm -hmm. and personify it online, you know, similar to Bob. Um, you know, you want to uh, display that trust, humanize your company, and help break down, you know, those sales barriers that people have when dealing with people that they don't know, and kind of just, you know, ex expand that trust. And then once we kind of establish your kind of rock star status, mm -hmm. we then expose you to, you know, the digital world and get you try to, you know, try to be everywhere we can possibly get. So you. let's uh, not miss this opportunity to ask such an expert about social media today sure. what are the avenues that one should be using now we use linkedin we not we're not facebook uh, we're talking about radio jobline okay. not facebook people but we do use linkedin to announce the show publish a post um give our instagram links we use instagram to put up our links of uh, videos and descriptions of what happened in the show what else should we be doing um, you guys are in a very lucky position that a lot of business owners aren't because social media is all content. Mm -hmm. It's content. So you guys are providing, you're creating content as your job. Mm -hmm. So if you can uh, produce short snippets, uh, you know, if we have a great segment and you're able to put a headline behind it, you know, here's, here's the top three things to do if you're looking for a job on Long Island. Right. If you're applying, here are the things not to do, which we're probably going to get into later today. Mm -hmm. And just produce either those audio segments, those video segments, and put them out on these channels. You're creating valuable content, and, you know, that's, that's the type of thing people are likely to tune into, likely to share with their friends who may be looking for a job and it'll spread viral. So we've got Twitter, We've right? We've got Twitter, Facebook. I have my uh, Catherine Polanco here, who is my super intern and also does our social media. So we, we're using LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. All right. What, what, is, there, is there another avenue I should be on? I mean, the biggest and baddest is Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much a lot of the clients... Excuse me for interrupting, but I have to tell you why we don't use Facebook. Okay, hit me. We had a stalker. Ah. So every week after my show... This one person, and only one person, and it's, and I've been on in media for 27 years, 24 on television, three on radio. This never happened before. One guy would write a, a synopsis of my show and explain how horrible I am. <laughs> how horrible am I? How horrible the topic was. How horrible the guests were. How offended he was by the show. Why does he say this about that? What, uh, he would pick on virtually everything, and this wouldn't be a one-sentence thing this would be an essay every week so i said to, i said let's pull it down i said let's just pull it. i don't need this I, I don't i don't need some sort of crazy guy doing this and what i like about instagram and so on is, is that i'm not getting any of that mm -hmm. negative flack i mean well congratulations that means yeah. you made it you've got uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've got the good with the bad so uh at least people are talking it, is, uh, is facebook is facebook falling out of favor at all i hope it is everybody says it is you know all you know the kids don't use it because their parents are on it it is a monster mm -hmm. I, I predict it will be probably the biggest company in the world mm -hmm. uh in the coming future mm -hmm. They're just so powerful, and you know, there's different caches with kids using this and parents using that, but it'll be here forever. Mm, interesting. Sorry to hear that, though, because mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a Facebook fan. Uh, but uh, all right, and then let's let's move back to Riverhead Building Supply for a minute. Tammy, what sort of uh, things are your company looking for, right? What kind of job openings do you have? Well, we're always looking for drivers. It seems to be almost a lost art, uh, CDL drivers. Mm -hmm. um, what we have done to try and in, entice people in is we have a driver trainer on staff that will help them uh, pass their CDL permit test, that will help them uh, with some just one-on-one uh, -on -one in the trucks, driving, um, and then take them for the road test. So that seems to help to bridge that gap. Uh, we have that in all our locations from Mineola to Montauk Point and also in Rhode Island. 
In addition to that, we have entry level positions for uh, retirees that want to return, maybe on a part time mm -hmm. um, counter sales, customer service in the yards. Uh, people, we have a large staff that comes in over the summer from college, and when they go back, we have jobs to fill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but that's good because we're continuously growing, so those jobs become permanent jobs. Uh, we also, again, are always looking to increase our sales force, mm. and, and especially in the design showrooms. Excellent. So how can people, well, first of all, give us the website for Riverhead Building Supply. It's rbscorp.com. Okay. And it's a careers page. There is a careers page. And what you would do is you would go on, you would fill, on the online, fill out the online application and set up a profile. And it does take some time. It's an applicant tracking system. And I know that some people get frustrated with it. But I will say from a recruiter standpoint, it's a fantastic tool. Mm -hmm. um, I can very easily go in the system and find anyone who has a CDL. You know, I could search by location. I could search by a whole host of things. Mm. Uh, maybe we're looking for someone in maintenance and I need somebody with carpentry skills or somebody that has HVAC skills. You know, the more information that's put in there, the better. Uh, I think one of the tragic mistakes people make is they don't do it completely. Uh, they may go in and set up their profile, but they don't tell me where they want to work or what type of jobs they want to work, or they limit themselves to one thing. Mm. An applicant tracking software, the beauty of that is you can apply for five jobs at once. Mm. It doesn't have to be just one job. You could say, I'll work in any of these locations, and my special skill is sales or dealing with people or whatever it may be. And I think that a lot of people put it in the system and then don't ever follow up, and I'm a big uh, advocate for following up. Tammy, I think a lot of people are confused by their resume because when you put up a resume, let's say you have a job in sales that I'm interested in and one in maintenance too. I'm interested in both. Well, what resume would I submit? Would I submit my sales resume or my maintenance resume? And I think people are confused with the applicant tracking systems as to which resume or multiple, can you upload multiple resume? And then do employers look at those multiple resumes and say, well, wait a minute, if the guy has three resumes, maybe he doesn't know what the heck he's doing. I think the best way to address that, I, a lot of people have more than one resume. Mm -hmm. uh, the best way to address that is you have an opportunity to upload a cover page. Explain what you're doing. Explain that you feel that you have talents that cross over. You know, you have skills and abilities that are transferable and they can apply to a sales job and a maintenance job and that you just think you're just gonna be a great employee no matter where we put you. Mm. Cover letter, I would say 85% of the people don't use a cover letter. Um, also, you can upload your resume and then you also complete the application. Don't skip the application because you did a resume. Mm -hmm. Complete the application and there's another opportunity. Give us more information, explain why you did what you did. Mm. And then follow up with a phone call and say, you know, I, I clicked on, uh, I want maintenance, I clicked on sales, and I clicked on driver, let me explain why. And the recruiter can put notes in the system, a manager can put notes in the system so that anyone who sees it will see that. And you were saying that if, uh, if someone's looking for Excel and they don't fill in under the skills section, if they don't put Excel in and you searched for Excel, it's not gonna come up. Exactly, and what also happens is a lot of times people feel, you know what, I want a paper application. And anyone can go to any one of our store locations and fill out a paper application, that's fine. But what happens then, it comes to HR, we upload it into the system, and then the only thing I could search is your name. Mm -hmm. So you've just limited yourself to a specific job and your name. Mm. So over time, uh, a lot of people don't realize our company or maybe other companies may have other things going on. We promote from inside the organization first. That means I have to give those people first dip. Right. Um, we also have a union, there's seniority, there's bumping. So just because you didn't get the first job, you, your paper application limits you to that job. If an internal person takes it, you're mm. out. George, does uh, Bob's use an applicant tracking system? We do. We use, uh, you know, probably one of the standard ones out there, which is Taleo. Mm -hmm. And exactly what Tammy just described, that's a lot of the same things that we run across. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely filling it out completely is probably first and foremost the best advice I could give. Right. But, but, you know, know what you're applying for and use those key words because that's exactly how we're going to narrow it down. And, uh, you know, I think uh, one of the other things that we're not looking for anymore these, these days is four and five page resumes. Mm -hmm. um, I quite honestly don't care what you did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's relevant today. You know, right. things have changed so much in the last 10 years. Right. I know when, uh, when I was job hunting, uh, I left the staffing business for about 10 years and I was in the marketing uh, and advertising field. And um, I was job hunting like anybody else. And I kept running across these applicant tracking systems and they drove me completely bananas. Because on, on, in one case that I can remember, I filled out five different pages of data. And then I went to hit submit and it just sat there 
I'm like, well, what do I do now? It's not, I'm not submitted. I wasn't able to successfully submit. What do I do now? We're going to come back and we're going to talk about that. We've got a break coming up. You're listening to Radio Job Line with Scott Possessor. We're here for you every Saturday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. to talk about your career. And today, you can find a job on the radio if you'd like to work for Generations Beyond or Bob's Discount Furniture or a very cool company, Riverhead Building Supply. You can call us, 631-451-1039, and you're going to get interviewed right here live on the radio. Got the nerve? Give us a call. We'll be right back after this news update. You're listening to Radio Job Lines with your host, Scott Possessor, right here on 1039 LI News Radio. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Radio Job Line with Scott Possessor. We're here every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m., and we're here live. And the reason that we're here live is because we want to talk to you. If you're job hunting, we have three different companies in the booth right now for th- offering three different sets of jobs, different types of jobs, very diversified jobs. Listen carefully. If you're, if you're qualified for any of the jobs you're about to hear, just give us a call right now. You get interviewed right here live on the radio, 631-451-1039. Let's see who's got the nerve today. Um, okay, let's go back to, uh, actually, th- this is a very interesting show for another reason. It's because we have digital marketing, we have a big retailer, and we have a commercial building supply company. So it's, it's all different stuff. So I'm very interested in digital marketing, Jesse. Um, six years ago, I remember saying to myself, I'm in marketing at that time. Should I really get involved with Twitter? Is Twitter going to make it? Is do you really need a 140 character thing to broadcast? I it, it, that's how fresh all of these venues are: Instagram and and Twitter and not Facebook, which has been around much longer. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you just never know what the next big thing down the pike is. You know, sure. so what do you recommend that people? Uh, do for a good mix nowadays in digital marketing? Um, You know, just you're not going to get any value out of the tools because that's what they are, tools, Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have a goal in mind, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're you're job hunting or you're, you know, out there, you know, seeking, you know, different hobbies, uh, if if there's no goal, you're just going to, you're going to do this because you feel like you have to because all the kids are doing it, Um, you know, but technology, you know, if you're in the industry, it's almost like counterintuitive. Like you didn't mention Snapchat chat which is like the biggest booming one right and you know even as a guy in the industry it's like it seems so stupid when you explain it to someone <laughs> right. so like your common sense would be like yeah it's gonna be a fad right. but I mean you get into it and it's almost changed the changes the way the human brain works you know right. the way you absorb this this media mm. so I mean just just get involved in the tools and you'll see right away you know will this help me you know reach my goal is there a value in it if you hate using it and there's no goal, you're not going to use it, and you know you're going to lean heavier on the tools that you do use. Well, I, I, I hate to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about, but perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about the applications for Snapchat in, sure. the, in the business community. Um, Snapchat is a great, great tool for, like we talked about before, humanizing your brand. It's a great storytelling tool. It's a bad tool for building an audience because mm-hmm. they're just starting to you know, allow you to kind of make friends and share things and do things like that. But if you have a following, if you have an established brand, uh, brand like Bob's or Riverhead, mm-hmm. you can kind of you know, have a channel, almost like a TV channel, mm-hmm. and people will subscribe and you can day-to-day either through pictures, through you know, little internet memes, or most commonly through video, just show what goes on behind the scenes, on the job, you know, what you're looking for as a recruiter. You can, you know, take down that corporate veil and people can, you know, humanize you and, and make you a lot more approachable. Mm. Is there anything that people don't know about from the digital marketing side that you could share with us? Maybe, maybe venues that are less popular but also give impact? Uh, or, or is it just the ones we already know? Is it Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn? There are very creative ways to use these tools. So there's tons of tools out there, and they haven't, gra- you know, haven't gained their traction yet. But one, one story that I think everyone here will appreciate, you know, on, on the topic of Snapchat. Snapchat lets you do geographical, I'm sorry, advertising. Um, so one person really wanted to work at this agency, so they basically put an ad on a very small geographic area around that agency 
agency that said, hey, hire Jesse to work at blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And everyone that worked at that agency inevitably saw that ad. And it was a very, you know, very, very specific ad mm -hmm. aimed at people that worked at their agency mm -hmm. as, as a recruitment tool. Interesting. And it cost them next to nothing. And right. it was something that everyone talked about around the water cooler. And he got his, he got his job. Right. So there's, there's tons of tools out there. How you creatively utilize them to, uh, to, to meet your goals is, is just yeah, I mean, I still remember the story of many years ago before the digital age of the guy at Young and Rubicam who got a job at Young and Rubicam by uh, hiring a plane that said hire so-and-so with the tail behind it. Exactly. Uh, you know, like on the beach. Now, that cost some money, yep. but it worked. And the guy still works there. I'm, Same I'm exact mindset. Yeah, yep. yeah. But that was before the digital age when you needed an airplane <laughs> to get the message, and now right. you just you just need a computer or you need a droid or an iPhone, and you're and you're good. You could do it on your couch. Yeah, yep. right on your couch. Okay. <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit more about digital uh, marketing, but let's talk about the company again and what sort of jobs your company is looking for. So right now, our prime uh, our prime position we're looking for a digital marketing manager. So someone that can come in that knows all the tools um, and kind of direct. You know, each client has different needs. You'll have a team behind you that will execute, you need to just have the strategy and the ability to manage people to make sure all these little things get down. Because, you know, you think back in the day, you've had this, you know, this giant ad campaign, it would revolve around like one commercial, and mm -hmm. everyone would put their eyes on that. Mm -hmm. Now with 200, 300 clients, they all have a Facebook, they all have a Snapchat, they all have an Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of air traffic to control. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of uh, organi uh, organizational skills, management skills, and, you know, having the mindset to kind of pick out the right strategy for the right client. And you would need somebody with that's very up on social media, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, how would people get a hold of you? To, is there more, are there more jobs? By the way? There are about five more positions. Yeah, let's, Every, get, let's have them. Sure. Everything from uh, part-time and full-time programmers. So mm -hmm. if you're a, a decent web programmer, we'd like to chat with you. Mm -hmm. Always looking for creative people. So there's uh, junior and full-time uh, graphic designers, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, a standard bookkeeping position. So something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, now tell us about the career pages online. You can visit our website. Um, even if you're not into uh, digital marketing, I guarantee you'll at least get a laugh or two. Uh, we have a oh, tell yeah, tell us that. <laughs> tell us the story. That that was a great. That was a great analogy. So we have. Uh, you know, we're very lucky to be in a business where we don't have to be business as usual. Um, so we can be very out of the box. We have a, a a website that's just dripping with our corporate uh, personality, our corporate culture. So everyone was making these. Uh, you know, these cool corporate uh, recruitment videos. So me being in our, uh, you know, our out of the box mentality, we figured we had to push the envelope and do something that no one else was doing. So if you go to our website and you visit our careers page, which is under the contact button, uh, you'll see a seven minute kind of movie slash recruitment video that's very, very heavily modeled against the Goodfellas, mm. a classic, classic movie. So we did a lot of exact shot for shot scenes. So if you're a fan of the movie, uh, you'll definitely get a kick out of this recruitment video. I cannot wait to see that. Now give us the website and uh, make sure how we access that page. Generationsbeyond.com. Um, if you're savvy, you can just type in generationsbeyond.com slash employment.php and you'll see all the positions. And then you'll see the video too. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, how'd you get that idea? What, 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 what just, you came up with it. I came up with it. If you come into my office, we'll have, uh, this is a very offbeat reference, and I use this to check how cool people are. Mm -hmm. I have the painting that Joe Pesci's mother painted in the movie, which is the one dog looking one way, one dog looking the other, if you wow, remember it. Wow, So some people come in, they point it out, and, and you know, that's kind of a, a big cool check, but uh, wow. huge fan of the movie. What? You know, one of the, one of the biggest questions I asked on an interview, you know, one of the first questions is, what's your favorite movie? Because it tells so much about a person. You know, I do that too. Uh, I actually it worked for me once. I, I was I was way back in my in my earlier career. Uh, I had seen the movie Braveheart, uh, okay. which I thought was one of the best movies I ever saw at that time. Since Mel Gibson's made some comments, it's a little bit less important to me now. But at that time, I thought it was a fabulous movie. And then I said to this guy I was interviewing, "What's your favorite movie?" He said, "Braveheart." I said, "No, uh, you know, I, I just my tongue was hanging." Around, and I wound up hiring him, and we worked together for seven years. Yep. Yep. So uh, very interesting. Uh, it's kind of funny how movies are because, it, you know, w you can tell by the movies that someone likes. You can tell about their culture. Absolutely. Uh, the way they grow up, you know, some of the things they believe in, possibly even their religion or, or, or ethnicity. Uh, so many things you can tell from the movies a person likes. What's Absolutely. your favorite movie? My favorite movie, definitely Goodfellas is in the top five. Okay. Um, I'm a big horror buff as well, so I like Evil Dead, all the gory stuff. Oh, Evil Dead. What about you, George? Oh gosh, um, I love comedies. So um, you know, probably something, something from the '80s. I don't know, Young Frankenstein. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, I love uh, Tom Hanks. So maybe like Big. That's a great movie. That's great a classic. Movie. Right? Great movie. Yes, 
And how about you, just out of curiosity? Oh, boy. <laughs> I would say Sound of Music, which is going to make everybody smile. Okay, but, but, uh, but you, see, you see what that says about you, mm-hmm. though? The fact that you, it's a great movie, The Sound of Music. Yeah. A fabulous movie, but it, says, it talks about your values, you know, what's important to you, uh, family, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and singing is obviously important. But, uh, no, I do think it's a very, very interesting question to ask on a job interview. Um, let's talk about job interviews, too. Um, I asked all of you to give some thought to some do's and don'ts for job hunters. And I'd like to just go around the panel and just, Tammy, tell us about somebody that did something so right that you were compelled to hire them because of their 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 approach to you. And then perhaps someone who did something so wrong that a perfectly good candidate, you decided not to hire. Well, I think there's certainly stages of the interview. You know, the initial, I uploaded my resume and then the follow-up calls. Um, I think the person that comes to mind that did the wor- one of the worst things as far as that stage would be someone who calls up to explain how annoyed they are with us because they have not heard from us <laughs> and um, goes on and on about how ridiculous it is and how he took the time. And, and after you've been berated for about five or ten minutes, you're not really inclined to schedule that interview. <laughs> so um, it doesn't leave you with a feeling that this is going to be a team player, hardworking employee that has the company's best interest in mind. Mm. Uh, I think that the next stage would be when they show up for the interview. I think all of us have had that situation where it's a Jekyll and Hyde situation. You you look at the resume and you have that initial call and you're excited about the interview and someone other than the person you spoke to seems to magically have appeared in your doorway. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of uh, tours with high school students uh, of our establishment, and we teach them how to interview for jobs. And one of the main things I ask them is, when do you think an interview starts? And, you know, you'll get all different answers. But the interview starts the minute you pull into my parking lot. Our receptionist is probably our best resource in the whole game. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, if they're using, if they're on the phone, if they're texting, if they're paying attention to their phone while they're in the interview, if they're chewing gum is my personal pet peeve, Mm -hmm. Um, if they're, uh, they don't answer your questions, they seem bothered by the interview, they're late that's another one. Mm. Um, and, you know, just not using professional language. There's a, p- a place for slang. There's a place for um, text messages or short emails. And then there's a place for your business professionalism. This just happened uh, not 10 days ago. We had a candidate. I'm in a staffing business. We had a candidate being interviewed in Livermore, California uh, for a quality control manager. Great guy. And I prepped him myself. I actually explained to him, look, they're going to talk to you about this. Make sure you frame this properly. Blah, blah, blah. Don't say this. Do that. So I was very helpful to the guy. And uh, during the interview, we, it happened so fast, I didn't know it. He, the, the candidate didn't even know it. But his phone rang during the interview. And all he did was reach for his phone and shut it off. But when the, the company w- turned around, he was getting a tour of the plant at the time. When the, when the manager turned around and saw he was playing with his phone, you know, during the tour. And so later I found out he didn't get the job. And then they said, why? And I said, because he was playing with his phone during the... He wasn't playing with his phone. He, had, he, he was paying attention to his phone for five seconds, but that was too many seconds. You just don't do it. Mm-hmm. You shut off the phone. Leave it in the car. Don't bring it in the building with you. Of course, I had my phone ring on my television show live. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that? So, uh, so I um, perhaps the listeners don't know. I actually uh, the phone rang with forty five seconds left in the show. It's it's on my hip, and it's ringing, and I don't know, I don't know what to do because the show the show is almost over. I only have a few seconds there, so I let it ring. I let it ring, mm-hmm. and of course I was looking at the guests accusingly, you know, so that the, maybe the, the viewers thought it wasn't my phone, it was someone else's. Phone. But it's very embarrassing when stuff like that happens. I mean, it's a killer. How about you? You got a good story for us, George? Well, I, I know you mentioned a little a uh, little while ago before the show started that um, you know I've had uh, applicants or, or prospective candidates come in with their parents, so right. I've seen that as well. Uh, definitely don't do that, right? right? Definitely right. don't do that. Um, just being prepared, you know, being prepared. Coming, I actually interviewed somebody yesterday, and you know, looked a little just disheveled and you know, kind of like uh, it was they were doing us a favor to come in and do the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, no resume. You know, come in prepared. Come mm-hmm. in prepared. All right, let's talk about the jobs that you have open, George. Sure. We're primarily, I mean, we are a sales, you know, corporation. So we're primarily looking for full-time and uh, part-time sales associates. Mm-hmm. It is uh, 100% commission. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you don't have to have sales background, sales experience. We like to say uh, we like to hire personality and we can train skills. So we have a very... Um, robust training program. We, we definitely take the time and tailor the training to the individual's need. 
Uh, but we're, we're absolutely always looking for great salespeople. Um, in addition, located where? Located? Uh, throughout the island. Okay. So, you know, anything Suffolk or Nassau County, I'm looking okay. um, currently. Okay. We also, within our stores, have uh, retail office associates. So this would be really kind of your forward-facing uh, customer service, um, the back office stuff. Uh, very administrative, but very much customer service. So a lot of uh, a lot of multitasking involved. Again, part time and full time, mm-hmm. and um, you know, always looking for managers. Um, you know, we're as I mentioned earlier, we're an ex- expansive company, growing very rapidly, and we you know can definitely use some great people. So uh, management level from store manager up all the way to you know, entry-level management within our stores. Mm. Now, on these commission jobs, is there a draw or something? They to, do work to, against to a draw, people? yeah. Yep. Otherwise, you, you, you know, it's hard to survive that. Right, yeah, people. absolutely. Okay. So they do work against a draw. All right, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So what about now, how do people apply for your jobs? Sure, real simple, mybobs.com and um, forward slash employment mybobs.com forward slash employment and you don't have a Goodfellas movie or anything like that. <laughs> no, we got we got some uh, pretty, you know, nice uh, stories about, um, you know, how people have come up through Bob's and a little bit about Bob's. Um, so there's there's some information you can find on our homepage or also on LinkedIn as well. Mm. And and compared to the other furniture stores like on Furniture Row, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 does people make about the same or is Bob's a place you can make more money because of the, the volume that they're doing? Um, you definitely can make more money. I think one of the things that we're spoiled with is, is door turns. We have a, a higher uh, amount of customers that come walking through our, our doors, and obviously that's driven by what Bob does, you mm-hmm. know, through the advertisement. So there's definitely much more opportunity there than, you know, some of the um, lesser well-known uh, companies or maybe companies that are tailoring to, a, you know, super high-end customer that uh, just not everybody can afford. Mm. So, um, yeah, there's definitely some some very strong p- earnings potential. Okay. Let's go back to Jesse. Go over the jobs again that you're trying to do and give your website one more time, too. Okay. The website is generationsbeyond.com. If you click on the contact button, there will be a careers link. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, we're looking for a digital marketing manager. Uh, full-time and part-time programmers and graphic designers, as well as a bookkeeper. Okay. And uh, Tammy, would you do, do, uh, do us again, please, on this? Absolutely. Riverhead Building Supply, and it's rbscorp.com. Click on the careers, and we're looking for sales, drivers, yardmen, entry-level, counter sales, um, as well as some help in our manufacturing facility. Okay. And uh, I'd like to go around one more time and also get some tips for, for job hunters on how to stand out. How do you stand out? If, if I said to you, now it's different with you because you're not using an applicant tracking system and that's probably gonna give you more traffic because people love that. Yep. Uh, but but how does, what what turns you on? What turns you off? What what, what can a person do to, to either make a strong impact with you or a weak impact? Sure, um, you know, we talked about, uh, talked about it a little before. I give you both ends of the spectrum. There's there's this like underlying sense of entitlement mm-hmm. uh, with certain people applying. I've had people you know uh, replying to a job application with, you know, this job sounds interesting. Call me on my cell to discuss. Mm. You know, like that level of entitlement, right? <laughs> um, and all varying degrees. Um, the other side of the spectrum, uh, I'm very lucky to be in an industry where you should stand out. You don't have to be business as usual. So I've had people. I've had a voiceover artist uh, wanting to apply and did a whole like six minute uh, demo. Mm-hmm explaining, you know, why he wants to work at my company, how he liked the Goodfellas video, why mm-hmm. he thought he should do this. Mm-hmm. So that type of stuff, I, I, you know, I save, I pass it around the office. It's, right. it's almost a little bit flattering. Right. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you know, everyone can make themselves stand out depending on the industry that you want to be in. Um, you know, I've had people sit in an interview and say they've never been to my website. They don't even know, you know, what they're doing. Right. So all ends of the spectrum. N- come prepared, like George said. Right. Um, you know, try to avoid that sense of entitlement. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and even if that were true that you hadn't gone to the website, why bring that up? Why yep. tell someone? Right. Jeez. <laughs> right. Uh, Tammy, help me over here. I, uh, I, <laughs> no, I was going to ask you uh, if, for tips. I would think be thorough. Take the time. If you're not going to take the time to give us all the information about yourself, to follow up, to make a good impression, to dress appropriately, to speak appropriately, then that shows us how much you want the job. I also agree. Learn about the company. Come in and know about the company. And you've got a very short period of time to sell yourself. Mm. Tell us why you should be hired. It's We have so many applications. And it's very, from our standpoint, we have a short period of time to evaluate. And you, ha- you have to make sure that we understand what you could do for us. Because in the end, that's what the employer wants to know. Okay. What can you do for me? How can you make my team better? One thing uh, from me um, to close the show with is I have been increasingly telling candidates to Google things 
outside mm-hmm. of going to the company's website. For example, let's say that um, th- that I wanted to go work for a digital marketing agency. Uh, I might say, go to Google and just type in the search line, issues facing digital marketers. Mm-hmm. And up would come 286,000 hits including articles written about that subject to round out your background. Mm -hmm. Okay, or or you can do the same thing with a market segment if you're doing industrial automation. Read, what is industrial automation? Who are the big players? Read about it, know about it. And it's so easy to do this nowadays with the level of refinement that the search engines have. So I always tell people, look at the issues facing the person, the job you're trying to get. Issues facing retail salespeople, issues facing um, distributors of, of, of building equipment, and you'd be amazed at what you will find. Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazed at the, at the information that's out there. So that's just my, a little tip from me. We are out of time, I'm afraid. You have been listening to Radio Job Line with Scott Possessor. We're here for you every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, if you'd like to contact our guests, uh, the websites are have been given uh, over and over again on this show. We had Riverhead Building Supply, we had Generations Beyond, and we had Bob's Discount Furniture. Uh, we'll be back with you next week with more topics, more companies, more ways to get a job, more things about success that we can talk about. And uh, I just want to say for me, do the research, folks. Google the issues facing the person you want to be. Happy hunting, everybody. Stop.